Hello students and welcome to today's session on novel drug delivery systems. In today's session, we are going to discuss and learn about a very interesting concept and the this concept we have come across a number of times not only in our academic session but also in daily life and the topic of today's discussion is nanoparticles as the word indicates these are particles which are in the nanometric size range and in the last decade or two a lot of research has been done on nanoparticles and their applications in various fields of life right from medicine to engineering to cosmetics and many 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 other applications are attributed to the presence of nanoparticles in these concepts so what we are going to discuss today in the next one hour or so is the concept of nanoparticles what are nanoparticles what are the different types of nanoparticles how they are manufactured uh, what are their applications and how to evaluate these nanoparticles so the concept of nanoparticles will be discussed here from the viewpoint of its pharmaceutical applications only but out of your own interest if you wish to learn more about these nanoparticles you can refer any standard textbook any pharmaceutics textbook and know more about this field in which lot of research has been carried out and is being carried out and in future too there will be lot of research carried out on nanoparticles we begin with a very brief history and background of the origin of nanoparticles the origin of nanoparticles has been attributed to the physicist richard feynman who is credited with inspiring the field of nanotechnology and what did he say the his famous sentence which he spoke in his lecture at the december 1959 meeting of the american physical society is there is plenty of room at the bottom so what he says is that as the machinery and uh, the particles keep getting smaller and smaller that is as small as the level of atoms and molecules their characteristics change and we can use these characteristics changed characteristics to build newer machines and newer delivery systems okay so his question why can we not build machines at the atomic level spurred research at the nano level okay so the original origin of nanotechnology and the history behind nanoparticles is credited to the physicist richard feynman his famous sentence there's plenty of room at the bottom a very thought provoking and inspiring statement made by him which spurred a generation of scientists to go and delve into the field of nanotechnology so with this brief introduction and background let us proceed forth now to understand nanoparticles from the point of view of its pharmaceutical application as you look for and search for definitions of nanoparticles several definitions will come forward a couple of definitions i will explain to you here any definition that you write is perfectly acceptable as far as your examination is concerned nanoparticles are defined as sub nano sized colloidal structures that are composed of synthetic or semi synthetic polymers so that means these are structures whose size is in the nanometric size range that is between 1 to 1000 nanometer and these are generally composed of synthetic or semi synthetic polymers which can be administered to the body 
in nature also we find several naturally occurring nanoparticles and a few examples are given in this image below dna is also in the nano size range its size is as uh, is di its uh, diameter is as small as 2 nanometers several of the naturally occurring proteins lie between 1 nanometer to 10 nanometer size of the antibodies is 7.5 nanometer Polymeric drug conjugates which are designed delivery systems lie in the range of anywhere between 5 to 20 nanometers or 5 to 50 nanometers. Thus, and there are several other uh, nanoparticles which are in the higher size range. Thus, nanoparticles can are made up of synthetic as well as semi-synthetic polymers. They are natural in origin. They also occur in nature. They occur in the human body itself in the form of DNA or RNA or the naturally occurring proteins. And they are also found in nature. Plants as well as animals also con contain these nanoparticles. Okay. And what we are going to study here is both synthetic and uh, semi-synthetic polymers which have pharmaceutical applications. For this process, let us proceed ahead. Continuing with our session on the definition of nanoparticles, there are two more definitions which I have put forward here and which will help you to understand this terminology better. Okay, so when we have a particle in front of us, how exactly, which is uneven in size and shape, how exactly do we define this particle and how do we determine whether this particle is a nanoparticle or not? So, for this purpose, there is one more definition which says that the term nanoparticles is used to describe particles with a size less than 100 nanometer at least in one dimension. So, if it is a multi-dimensional non-uniform structure, if one of the dimensions is less than 100 nanometer, then that particle can be termed as a nanoparticle. Several terms are used interchangeably to describe nanoparticles. So, the other terminologies that are used instead of nanoparticles but which mean the same thing include nanomaterials, nanoscale particles, nanoscale materials, nano-sized particles, nano-sized materials, nano-objects and nano structured materials okay any of these uh, words means the same thing also you have another definition here below which says that pharmaceutical nanoparticles are defined as solid sub micron sized drug carriers that may or may not be biodegradable okay so this is another definition of a nanoparticle let us move forward there are various ways in which one can classify nanoparticles so i have selected the classification based on the uh, structure shape and structure of the nanoparticles depending on the dimensions of the nanoparticles nanoparticles can be classified as one dimensional nanoparticles two dimensional nanoparticles and three dimensional nanoparticles. A one dimensional nanoparticles are one dimensional systems which are basically thin films or monolayers and they have wide application in the field of solar cell. Different, they have other technological applications such as chemical and biological sensors, information storage systems, magneto optic and optical device or fiber optic systems okay so the application of one dimensional nanoparticles is more in technology such as solar cells or sensors or it they have very less or non-existent medicinal pharmaceutical applications so the, so, the category of nanoparticles which has medical and pharmaceutical applications are two-dimensional nanoparticles and three-dimensional nanoparticles. One example of two-dimensional nanoparticles is carbon nanotubes and uh, the uh, po more popular 
application uh, the more popular examples of three dimensional nanoparticles include dime, uh, dendrimers quantum dots or what are also called as qds and fullerenes and in the next few slides we will look at these two dimensional nanoparticles and three dimensional nanoparticles quickly coming to two dimensional nanoparticles the example of which is carbon nanotubes a diagrammatic representation of which you can see on the right hand side top so this is a structure which consists of a hexagonal network of carbon atoms 1 nanometer in diameter and 100 nanometer in length so this cross sectional area let me show you this this uh, cross sectional diameter is 1 nanometer once again this diameter is 1 nanometer and the length of this carbon nanotube may extend anywhere up to 100 nanometers and this consists of a layer of graphite which is rolled into a cylinder so it has a cylindrical form with a diameter of 1 nanometer and a length extending up to 100 nanometers again there can be several examples of such uh, carbon nanotubes you, there may be a single walled carbon nanotubes as shown here and there could be multi walled carbon nanotubes now these are more uh, these have applications in chemistry and several of these uh, applications are reported in literature so you can go through standardized literature and read more about carbon nanotubes which is a very interesting concept and a type of nanoparticle we next look at the three dimensional nanoparticles of carbon uh, which are called as fullerenes fullerenes are spherical as you can see here they are spherical cages and they contain anywhere from 28 to more than 100 carbon atoms so the diameter of this sphere changes it is small in case of 28 uh, carbon atoms and uh, when the carbon atoms are more than 100 the size is large however the size is still in the nanometric range this is basically a hollow structure so the sphere is hollow and it is composed of interconnected carbon pentagons and hexagons so you can see the pentagonal structure and the hexagonal structure which is interconnected and for stability purposes it is spherical it resembles a soccer ball these fullerenes are empty structures and they are dimensionally similar to several biological active molecules so they can enter the body and they can reach the site of action therefore if they are if the drug is embedded in the fullerenes then these fullerenes can be used for delivery of delivery of, uh, uh, delivery of uh, drugs to the site of action so based on their peculiar characteristics that is hollow interior and carbon which is uh, natural uh, which is naturally occurring in the body they avoid detection and they are able to deliver the drug to the target site fullerenes are an example of three dimensional nanoparticle other example of uh, three dimensional uh, nanoparticles are dendrimers again a diagrammatic representation of dendrimers is available on the right hand side top corner as you can see these are highly networked structures so what is special about these dendrimers let us see dendrimers are usually 10 to 100 nanometer in diameter so how much how much ever a complex structure the dendrimer is its diameter is going to lie within the nanometric range and it has multiple functional groups on its surface so these yellow spheres you can see on the surface of the dendrimer are functional groups which can interact with the drug molecule or with the molecules within the body they are compatible with organic structures such as dna so they can be used as carriers for dna and these dendrimers can also be metallic in nature so by use of metal atoms metallic nanostructures can be fabricated or nanotubes can be fabricated and these dendrimers have encapsulation capacity 
which is why you can see the representation of drug here in the form of red dots. So, the drugs can be bound to the groups, functional groups on the surface of the dendrimers or the drugs may be entrapped within the fibrous network like structure of the dendrimers. So, their pharmaceutical applications are drug delivery of non-steroidal and anti-inflammatory drugs. So, they are used in NSAID formulations. They are used in antimicrobial formulations as well as for in entrapping antiviral drugs, anti-cancer drugs, pro-drugs as well as screening agents for high throughput delivery of drugs. So, there are several applications of uh, dendrimers not only in pharmaceutics but also in the pharmacology in preclinical and clinical uh, studies as well as in as for screening agents in high throughput drug, drug discovery program. The last example that we are going to look at of three dimensional uh, nanoparticles is quantum dots. If, uh, if you can see this figure, so this is a sphere just like a dendrime, uh, just like a fullerene, but the sphere is not hollow, the sphere is full. So what does this sphere contain? This sphere contains, uh, so, in the, so basically quantum dots are small individual spheres that come together to form a larger sphere and it contains and the entire dots are made up of free electrons. So the entire quantum dot structure which you can see uh, represented by uh, the uh, blue dots and the red dots consists of free electrons which are represented by the blue dots here. Okay, and these free electrons come from the atoms from group two and six, or from the group, or from the group uh, two and five of the periodic table. And this quantum dot, this core of the quantum dot, which is made up of electrons, is surrounded by a shell which is made of zinc sulfide or cadmium sulfide. So you can see the core that is made up of electrons in blue. And you can see the shell that is made up of zinc sulfide or cadmium sulfide in red. So there is a core made up of free electrons and there is a protective shell made of zinc sulfide or cadmium sulfide whose function is to prevent the surface quenching of the electrons. So it prevents the surface quenching of the electrons that is they, uh, they are unable to take up uh, the positive charge and uh, and become neutral and also photostability of the electrons is increased okay so thus the electrons are protected and their functionality is maintained because of the protective core such quantum dots provide enough surface area to attach therapeutic agents for three things simultaneous drug delivery in vivo imaging and tissue engineering. So, the surface of the shell that is the zinc sulfide and cadmium sulfide has a number of functional groups and this allows the uh, binding or complexation of several moieties simultaneously onto the surface of the quantum dots. Thus, simultaneous drug delivery in imaging, so uh, contrast imaging or diagnostic imaging and tissue engineering functionalities can be combined into one delivery system that is quantum dots and thus quantum dots are a type of novel drug delivery systems which are very very useful and perform multiple functions at the same time. Moving forward to the advantages of such nanoparticulate systems. Depending upon the material of construction of the nanoparticle, depending on the function that it is supposed to perform, depending on its characteristics that have got modified because of the small size, a nanoparticulate system can have several advantages. So here in my slides, I have listed down a few of the advantages. However, if you go through literature, you will come across several advantages of nanoparticulate systems. Let us go through and understand the advantages listed here. The particle size and surface characteristics of nanoparticles 
can be easily manipulated to achieve both passive as well as active drug targeting after parental administration. Now here, remember that these particles being extremely small, that is in the nanoparticulate size range, they fit the particle size criterion of parental products. Therefore, most of the nanoparticles are used to design parental drug delivery systems, colloidal parental drug delivery systems. As we know, whenever any, uh, part, any suspension has to be injected within the body, the particle size has to be less than 10 microns. And this is already in the nanometric size range. So it is very safe and advantageous. So nanoparticles generally preferred, preferably given as parental drug delivery systems. Because of their size, nature and because of the surface uh, that has been uh, protected by additional functional groups or presence of drug particles, it is able to avoid detection by the immune system of the body and it remains in the body for a prolonged period of time and thus it is able to reach the immune cells. It is taken up by the immune cells. It, and some of it also reaches the target site of action. Thus, drug delivery from the nanoparticulate delivery systems takes place not only to cells of the immune system such as the macrophages and the neutrophils, but also to specific cells, tissues and organelles towards which it is targeted. At the same time, depending on the characteristics, depending on the hydrophilicity or the hydrophobicity of the nanoparticles, they can be targeted to reach the site by active uh, diffusion or by passive diffusion or by receptor optic. Nanoparticulate drug delivery systems control and sustain the release of the drug during transportation and at the site of localization. So they can release the drug simultaneously or they can be so designed that they release the drug slowly. We are now familiar with controlled release and sustained release of the drug. So both these are achieve, achievable in such drug delivery systems. Once it reaches the site of action, subsequent clearance of the drug so as to achieve increase in drug therapeutic uh, uh, efficacy and there is reduction in side effects. So these drugs are, these delivery systems are so efficient that they are able to deliver the drug to the site of action and because there is no drug that reaches the other gen organs, there is a decrease in the incidence of side effects. Such nanoparticulate carrier systems, which we will look at in the subsequent uh, slides, are used to carry the drug. Now, drug loading onto these nanoparticles is found to be very efficient, relatively high, and thus the drugs that are selected can be incorporated into these delivery systems physically and without any chemical reaction. So, there is no need of heat catalyst, uh, temperature, etc. for uh, the loading of the drug. Drug loading is a simple process and the efficiency is very high. Another advantage of these nanoparticles is they can be used for site specific targeting by attaching ligands onto the surface of the particles. So specific ligands attached to the surface of the nanoparticle particulate carrier system will help to deliver it to specific sites. Nanoparticles can be administered by any of these routes, oral, nasal, parenteral, intraocular and others any route. Since the particle size is so small, it can be given by the parenteral route. Since it is very small, it can be given by the intraocular route also. These are some advantages of nanoparticles which I came across in another textbook. So it talks of increased bioavailability. Now, obviously, because the nanoparticles are freely circulating in the general circulation, they are not detected or they are detected to a lesser extent by the immune cells. They are not degraded by the immune cells. They are not removed from circulation by, by, hepatic, uh, uh, circ by hepatic circulation. Then there is increase in the extent of bioavailability. And because of that, the amount of dose required is lower 
and a, so, so subsequently the dosage form is also smaller. So the amount of uh, the solution to be injected is decreases because the dose is smaller. Nanoparticles are very small in size and they entrap very small particles, drug particles. So the overall increase in surface area of the particles that are entrapped, of the drug particles that are entrapped in the nanoparticles result in larger surface area being exposed to the uh, fluids, to the GI fluids. This results in a faster dissolution of the active ingredient in the aqueous environment, either outside the body or inside the human body. Faster dissolution leads to greater extent of absorption and higher bioavailability. Because of smaller dose, lesser toxicity is manifested in patients. And the, all this uniformity in increase in bioavailability, uniformity in delivery of the drug to the body uh, and the target tissues and organs leads to lesser variation. So whether the subject is fed or fasted, because the nanoparticles are really not influenced by the amount of lipids or the diet, then hence there is reduction in variability. So there is no difference between the fed plasma, uh, fed uh, plasma drug levels and the fasted plasma drug level. This is a pictorial representation of the advantages of nanoparticles. I found this slide to be very attractive. So I've taken it and uh, put it up here. As you can see, that if nanoparticles are to be targeted towards the lung, the drug as carrier systems for drugs acting on the lung, then the benefits of using nano drug delivery systems is a prolonged circulation time because of which the drug is more likely to reach the lungs. Biocompatibility of these nanoparticles, so they are reach the lung and then they are subsequently, uh, the drug acts and then the remainder of the delivery system is degraded so biodegradable and targeted delivery is achieved. At the cellular level, because the dose is low and because the drug has reached the target site without being degraded, there is low cytotoxicity potential and the tissue is not damaged. No, so low toxicity, so tissue is not damaged, tissue is viable. Also, as the drug circulates, uh, nanoparticle delivery system with the drug circulates in the blood, it is some of it is taken up by the macrophages where these, uh, where the nanoparticles are broken down and the drug is released. These macrophages reach the site of action, that is the lungs, where they release the drug. Other advantages uh, of uh, nanoparticle delivery systems includes increased stability because the drug is entrapped within the nanoparticle, reduced dose of reduced concentration of drug in the plasma, protection from degradation again which is uh, increase in stability, solubilization of the molecule because of increase in surface area. These are some of the advantages of nanoparticles in pharmaceutical applications. As far as vaccines are concerned, nanoparticles play a special role as an immunostimulant adjuvant where they stimulate the generation of antibodies to a much higher level. And they also they increase the immunogenicity of the antigen. So in a if a vaccine is combined in a vaccine, the uh, antigen is combined with a nanoparticle delivery system, then the generation of antibodies or the level of antibodies in such a case is found to be much higher. In this slide, we can see that nanoparticles or rather nanotechnology has wide applications, not just in the field of medicines, cosmetics, but also in food sciences, environment, allergy, military, electronics, scientific tools and agriculture. Thus, nanotechnology, nanoparticles have wide applications and the very first application that is listed here is nanomedicines, which we will look at in some more detail in the subsequent slides. There are two types of polymeric systems that are used in the manufacture of nanoparticles. The first one is naturally occurring polymers, which are also hydrophilic in nature and are easily formed, uh, easily found and is used uh, for the manufacture of nanoparticulate delivery systems. These include proteins such as gelatin 
albumin, lectin, or legumin, or vicillin, and also the other class of naturally occurring polymers, which can be used for nanoparticulate delivery systems, includes polysaccharides such as alginates, dextran, chitosan, agarose, and pululan. Of this category of uh, polymers just discussed, it has been seen that alginates are very popular and used for as carriers for drugs for oral as well as ophthalmic use. Dextran, albumin, gelatin are found to be popular. However, they manifest immunogenicity due to the presence of traces of cross-linking agents. Remember, these are molecule, high molecular weight polymers which undergo cross-linking. And traces of these cross-linking agents can lead to immunogenic reaction in the patient. The other category of polymers that are used as carriers are synthetic hydrophobic polymers, which so these polymers could be pre-polymerized or they could be polymerized during the formulation manufacturing process. The examples of pre-polymerized polymers that are used for nanoparticulate drug delivery are polylactic acid, polystyrene and polyepsilin caprolactone. As against this, polymers of methacrylic acid or cyanoacrylates are manufactured in situ. So the mono monomers are added to the formulation and they are polymerized in situ. However, the drawback of such synthetic hydrophobic polymers is the toxicity manifested by monomers, unreacted monomers and biodegradability issues because of the non-biodegradable nature of these synthetic polymers. Therefore, long-term usage of polymers for nanoparticulate systems depends more on the natural hydrophilic polymers rather than these synthetic hydrophobic polymers. Therefore, in recent times, it is the natural polymers which have gained prominence as drug delivery systems nanoparticulate drug delivery systems for carrying and delivering drugs to the target site of target site of action since we are interested in the application of nanoparticles as drug delivery systems we will look at this classification where the two types of nanoparticles which can hold which can carry the drug and deliver it are discussed so on this slide, you can see that nanoparticles are classified into nanospheres and nanocapsules. Nanospheres are spherical core particles as shown here into which the drug is embedded. So the particles, so these uh, nanoparticles are spherical and they are matrix type of particles in which the drug is uniformly embedded. So you have some drug particles on the surface as well as you have the drug particles embedded in the matrix which consists of polymer plus other excipients. The other category of nano carrier systems are called as nano capsules and these are capsules where wherein the interior is encapsulated by a polymeric sheet and the drug is present inside. So here the drug solution is embedded in a polymeric capsule or a capsule which has a polymeric sheet. So the difference between the two sphere, the two systems that is the nanosphere and the nano capsule is that in the nanosphere the drug is embedded in the polymeric matrix. Whereas in the nano capsule, the drug solution is encapsulated by the polymeric sheath or film. So the drug is available to the system once the nanoparticle is taken up and it disintegrates or it degrades. Thus, the functional classification of nanoparticles can be into nanospheres and nanocapsules. Nanospheres are spherical particles, they are core particles consisting of polymer in a matrix form along with other suitable excipients for design of this nanosystem. 
it consists of the drug particles which are uniformly embedded in the nanosphere in case of nano capsules the drug solution or the drug dispersion is encapsulated and is surrounded by a polymeric sheath to make the concept of nanosphere and nano capsule more clear a diagrammatic representation of these systems nanosphere and nano capsule and the mechanism by which they carry the drugs is explained here once again as you can see a nanosphere is a spherical polymeric matrix like structure which consists of the drug uniformly embedded in the matrix and also the drug may be adsorbed phys by physical reaction or by chemical reaction onto the surface of the uh, sphere as the nanosphere encounters the gi fluid the drug from the surface is initially released and this is followed by release of the drug from within a nano capsule will consist of a drug solution that is that is uh, surrounded by a polymeric sheath or a protective shell so the majority of the drug is in solution form or in dispersion form within this protective sheath and there may also be some drug that is adsorbed onto the surface of the polymeric sheath the drug that is present on the external surface will first dissolve in the gi fluid and be available for absorption and the remainder of the drug slowly penetrates out of the polymeric sheath and if these nanospheric systems or nanocapsulate systems are injected into the body then the drug comes in contact with the blood and the drug slowly diffuses out of the system and into the blood here the nanosphere is explained more in detail so the nanosphere is a spherical system in which the drug is embedded in the matrix so there is drug present within the nanosphere and there is also drug present on the surface absorbed adsorbed onto the surface okay so here the polymeric nanoparticulate drug delivery systems originally designed were those which contained non biodegradable polymers here the drug is and drug molecules are entrapped within the polymeric matrix or they may be adsorbed physically by physical uh, attraction or chemical bonding onto the surface of the nanoparticle or the nanosphere could have drug particles embedded within it as well as adsorbed onto it this was a very popular nanoparticulate drug delivery system for a long time however it is not suitable for long term use because the polymer used is non biodegradable and therefore it remains in the body for a long period of time this in turn generates an immunological response to the polymer and which can have harmful effects on the body how are these nanoparticulate drug delivery systems prepared there are two approaches to the preparation of these systems the first is called the top down approach wherein a larger particle is broken down so an external force is applied to a solid particle and it is broken down into smaller particles so from top larger particle to smaller particle so this is called the top down approach so the top down approach is the method of breaking up a solid substance and subdividing it either by dry grinding or by wet grinding both these techniques of dry grinding and wet grinding you are already familiar with therefore we are not going to focus on the techniques of grinding rather we are going to have an overview of the methodologies for manufacture of nanoparticulate drug delivery systems the second approach is to build up the nanoparticle from the atomic level so it is called as the bottom up approach which produces nanoparticles starting from atoms of the gas or the liquid and then its atomic transformations or molecular condens uh, condensations so where a larger particle is broken down into a small particle whose dimensions at least one dimension is in the nanoparticle range such an approach is called the top down method 
and where atoms or molecules of the gas or liquid are brought together and they build up to form nanoparticles such an approach is called as a bottom up approach for the top down approach either dry grinding or wet grinding process results in small particles thus this process can be performed on high energy mills it can be uh, for, it can be uh, used on cent by using a centrifugal type mill or a vibratory type mill or a low energy tumbling mill so any of the standard mills that are used for particle size reduction can be used to apply the top down approach and convert larger solid particles into smaller nanoparticulate uh, uh, particulate systems that can be used for drug delivery thus high energy mills such as attrition ball mill planetary ball mill vibrating ball mill low energy tumbling mills and high energy ball mills can be used for this top down approach coming to the bottom up approach where we start at the atomic level or the molecular level and we bring about condensation or we bring about uh, build up of molecules to the nanoparticulate level there are several techniques as you can see here see the bottom side, bottom of the image there are two methods the liquid liquid method and the sedimentation method in the liquid liquid method the chemical reduction method indirect reduction method spray drying spray pyrolysis solvo thermal synthesis and supercritical fluid extraction methodologies can be used for building up nanoparticles from the molecular level at the same time sedimentation techniques can be used for building up the uh, nanoparticles from the molecular level so for more details about these methodologies you can refer any standard textbooks so now we know what are nanoparticles we know about their function as drug delivery systems or drug carriers we know that they avoid the uh, immune systems they bypass the immune systems and they are able to reach the target site of action we also have classified nanoparticles on the basis of their dimensions and on the basis of their size and shape and symmetry and we know that they can be synthesized by the top Uh, down approach or the bottoms up approach now let us look at the evaluation of these nanoparticles uh, nanoparticles have to undergo physical chemical characterization their protein interaction has to be well studied and toxicity studies have to be carried out as a part of the laboratory quality control tests there are several tests that need to be carried out routinely on every batch of these nanoparticles right from the composition of the nanoparticles to the drug content the particle size of the nanoparticles and their surface charge that is polydispersity their shape their zeta potential the surface area measurement of the surface area of these nanoparticles and the eff efficiency of coating of these nanoparticles if any coating has been done the solubility of the drugs that is encapsulated also has to be evaluated if any antigen has been adsorbed onto the surface of the nanoparticle then the percentage of antigen that has got adsorbed adsorbed has to be estimated similarly whether the antigen will be released under physiological conditions as well as stability studies of these nanoparticulate drug delivery systems under different temperature time and processing has to be carried out as you can see on the right hand side the instrumentation techniques that are involved in carrying out the physical chemical characterization of these systems is mentioned so you can read up more details about these systems from any standard analytical textbooks coming to uh, their in vivo behavior it is necessary to understand whether these nanoparticulate systems will bind to the proteins circulating proteins circulating in the blood for this purpose several uh, tests such as ultra centrifugation 2d electrophoresis ms S, uh, spr scc itc qcm need to be carried out 
conformational changes now these are uh, the proteins uh, that are associated with this nanoparticulate drug delivery systems also need to be assessed and conformational changes that uh, using spectroscopy fluorescence fpir etc needs to be studied when these delivery systems are being developed and studied or before the preclinical studies or the clinical studies the toxicity has to be estimated toxicity includes cell viability hemocompat hemocompatibility studies agglutination studies coagulation studies extent of platelet act activation whether any oxidative stress is generated in the body and whether genotoxicity is elicited by these dosage forms after all these are novel drug delivery systems where not much information is yet available about their the influence on the body in terms of safety efficacy and toxicity therefore extensive studies need to be carried out at the formulation development stage and which is why preclinical studies followed by clinical studies are very very important okay so this is the entire range of uh, tests that need to be carried out on nanoparticles again depending upon the drug that is entrapped within these nanoparticles and the functionality of these nanoparticles as well as the route of administration of these nanoparticles certain specific tests need to be designed and conducted on these nanoparticles moving forward we now come to some of the applications of nanoparticulate drug delivery systems in pharmacy okay so where nanoparticles are designed as nano suspensions and nano crystals that is the final formulation in such a case we can see that the drug powder is formulated as a dispersion by using a surfactant solution to give us a stable system for controlled drug delivery of poorly soluble drugs so this says that nanoparticulate systems can be used for controlled drug delivery of poorly soluble drug where the nanoparticles are designed as solid lipid nanoparticles then they help to form less toxic and more stable carrier systems for drugs polymeric nanoparticles the application of which we saw in one of the previous slides can be used for controlled as well as targeted drug delivery polymeric micelles as nanoparticulate delivery systems help in uh, the controlled and systemic delivery of water insoluble drugs similarly there are other types of nanoparticles such as magnetic nanoparticles for uh, diagnostics carbon nanotubes for gene and dna delivery liposomes for controlled and targeted drug delivery nano shells for tumor targeting so on and so forth so you can refer any standard textbook or reviews that are available on the net and read more about the applications of nanoparticulate systems in as drug delivery carrier as a drug carriers for delivery of drugs to specific sites and organs okay so with this brief overview of the nanoparticles i conclude this chapter and i emphasize again on the fact that these are the most researched currently the most researched and uh, most worked upon delivery systems and they are not just delivery systems they have several other uses not only in the field of pharmacy but in several other fields for and to understand more about these systems you can read about the literature about nanoparticles and nanotechnology in much more detail thank you